Robert Lunt and Lynn Fontan with Tammy Grime and Brian Bedford, stars of the current New York production of Noel Coward's Private Lives with Bob Rosengarten and the orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Cavett. Uh, I guess it must be no secret by now uh, that we have, uh, besides Tammy Grimes and Brian Bedford, Mr. Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontan, and Sir Noel Coward, who was kind enough to step in at the last minute when soupy sales canceled. And, uh, so it's a real... It's a real honor for us, and I, I uh, would like to just uh, tell you that we will be back with all of those people after this. Everyone has heard so many uh, quotes and anecdotes about Noel Coward, or Sir Noel, as he's now known, and today I found one that I had not heard before. He was at a, uh, one of those recitals, dreadful things, they must be where little children are playing the piano with their parents. I don't know how he got trapped into being at this occasion, and a proud mother pointing to her daughter playing said to him, Mr. Coward, do you like music? And he said, no, but I love this. Um, I don't know if he remembers that. But uh, it would take up an awful lot of time to start enumerating his accomplishments as a great actor and a great comedian and a great playwright and a great songwriter and a great wit. And um, it's nice to have all those people in one person. With us uh, last week, the uh, Queen of England did what everybody agrees should have been done some time ago and made him Sir Noel Coward. Will you welcome, please, the master, Sir Noel Coward. Nice to see you, Sir Noel. And if I don't say Sir Noel, uh, please reprimand me sharply when... Uh... I will. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> hadn't expected that. Um, you were knighted... Uh, did I, I said a week ago. Is it more recent than that? I mean, is it uh, longer ago than that, or was it... It was a little was some... further back than that. Yes, I don't know why. I get muddled, you know, with all these honors. <laughs> Do you? There's a rumor that you... Uh, in a sense, turned down knighthood or scoffed at it about 35 years ago. Um, I so never scoffed at it, but I did turn it down mm. because it was offered to me, I thought, for the wrong reason. It was because I had just done what everybody insisted was a very patriotic play called Cavalcade. Yes. And I didn't think that was quite the moment. I thought better wait until age etches those fascinating lines <laughs> and have it a bit later on. I see. And so you waited. Is there anything that you can do now as a knight that you were not able to do uh, before? No, there are lots of things that I can't do now as a knight that I could do before. <laughs> I hope you won't feel too limited, though. I, I, I think that it would be very uh, hard to accept the, the honor of being a knight. I think I would probably wear armor if I were given such an honor. And it would be, be very uncomfortable. Uh, since no, I don't think armor's the thing. That no. went out, you know, some time ago. Some... You, uh, I seem to remember that. You have been feted, if that's the word. I mean, F-E-T-E-D. Fated. Fated, I'm sorry. <laughs> feted has quite a different meaning, doesn't it? It certainly I, has. I, uh... <laughs> This show may be very near an end at this moment if I don't um, get my pronunciations correct. Yeah, but, um, that, I think it was uh, on your 70th birthday, there were weeks, it seemed like, of, of honors so, in England for you, or maybe it was all concentrated into one week, but stories kept coming over here. No, you... it went on for quite a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lovely. Exhausting, but lovely. It was exhausting. Yeah. Do you find that... Uh, I know you were interviewed by almost every publication over there. Was it hard to keep... Uh, 
coming up with things to say that were fresh and new and... Well, you know, that's never been one of my major problems. <laughs> but I did get a little tired of ask, answering the ordinary questions. Yes. Because I'll... sometimes they were so awfully alike. I'll, I'll try to avoid as many pitfalls as I can. That was just a warning. I think. <laughs> I, uh, I find that um, uh, you are one of those people whose name... I cannot imagine it being anything but Noel Coward. You seem to fit your name. Uh, I hope this isn't um, too silly a comment, but it occurred to me as I was standing backstage, do you have a middle name? And I asked someone suddenly, and they said, I assume not. Is that a fair question? Unfortunately... It's a perfectly fair question, mm -hmm. and I regret to say I shall have to answer it. There is... My mother had a friend... <laughs> ...called Jessie Pierce. And for some reason, best known to herself, my middle name is Pierce. But in order to take the horror of it away a bit, it's P-E-I-R-C-E. -E. So we don't use it. Oh, it's <laughs> probably just as well. You, you're, you're, um, what is the word for when one has terrific, prolific uh, qualities? Talent. <laughs> yes. Your talent. <laughs> it's, uh, it's those long words that I stumble on. Um, <laughs> Has, has there ever been a time in all of these years, when you look back at a list of all the things you've done, it's just staggering, the, the, the number of songs alone, let alone the plays, the movies, the, the, all of the other things. Has there ever been a, a, a time when the coward well uh, seemed to be running dry, where you thought, maybe I can't... Frankly, no. No. <laughs> Not really. There have been a few fallow periods. Mm -hmm. But then the great thing is that I've always done, all my life, when I think that I've been over writing or overacting, which is a rare occurrence, mm. I um, go away to the other side of the world for about nine months. That is the usual gestation period, you know. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, that you're going to come back refreshed, I think. You come back great with play, do you? <laughs> Do you mind people completing your metaphors? I, I don't mean to jump in. I there. didn't know that was a metaphor. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm going to keep moving very quickly here. <laughs> I was stunned to read that when, in which we serve, uh, the great film that, uh, about which Alexander Wolcott said, if you'd never done anything else in your life, you would be richly famous. Uh, and um, it, uh, I was reading about that, and there was a time in that film where you almost didn't survive the making of the film. Could you tell that story? Do you know the, do you know the incident I'm referring to? When I was nearly drowned, you mean? Yes. Well, it was great fun, that was. Uh, but I, it was quite simple. It's not a very interesting story, but I was... We did the, all the sea stuff mm -hmm. in, in a tank in the studio. But for certain shots, we had to go outside the studio into a real large tank. And I had to stand on the bridge, which was only just a bit of a bridge showing, mm -hmm. and go over into the water with the bridge on top of me. Yeah. That was a bit tricky, but I fought my way free just in time. If you, did your life flash before your eyes and think I may never get to do the Dick Cavett show or <laughs> anything like that at that moment? Well, you know, I thought I might do the Dick Cavett show, and so it sort of brought me up to the surface. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's all the epitaph I want. <laughs> uh, have you ever hated an audience? Very, very often indeed. Have you? I, yes. Often people in the theater say there is no such thing as a bad audience, and the people who had the most experience say, say that I'm interested in that. Well, they vary. Generally, with the days of the week, Monday's a bit of a beast, as a rule. Tuesday cheers up a bit. Wednesday, Matty Dicey. Wednesday night, warmer. Thursday, as a rule, good. Friday, the best. Saturday yeah. matinee. Saturday. Saturday night. Either marvelous mm -hmm. or ghastly. I wonder where that is on Saturday 
Well, because, the, I don't know, there are a lot of uh, out-of-town people in, and they are not quite sure when they're expected to laugh. Mm -hmm. I'd try to make it clear. <laughs> mm. Is your, is your friendship with the Lentz, uh, can you remember the actual meeting uh, when you first laid eyes on the Lentz? Well, I didn't exactly lay eyes on the Lentz. <laughs> but I did know Linny many years ago when she was playing at the Royalty Theatre in London. Uh, we used to meet at a splendid little joint called the Ham and Bone Club. That was way back, that was 1917 about. Alfred I didn't meet until 1921, when I came to America for the first time, when he was already engaged to Lynn. Mm -hmm. I say engaged, but it was very lovely, because I'd never seen him before, and we all three became absolutely devoted to each other, and decided that when the day dawned, and we knew it was going to, when we were all three stars in our own right, that I would write a play for the three of us. And the result of all that was Design for Living. Mm -hmm. Mr. Coward, I wonder if... Uh, I, I suppose this is one of the questions that people ask you a lot, but you have a reputation for being able to sit down and dash off a play uh, between dinner and dessert, uh, at least according to Kaufman and Hart in that parody they did of you in Man Came to Dinner. And uh, playwrights uh, have envied this or, or felt that uh, it was exaggerated or both, I don't know. What, what is the truth about your, your terrific speed? Both. Exaggerated, and I don't dash off plays that way. Mm -hmm. I generally, if I have an idea for a play, latch onto it and hope that the next day it will come back. And the next day after that, and if it comes back three or four times, I think maybe this is worth going on with. But that doesn't necessarily mean I write it straight away. I like, particularly of later years, I like taking my time and letting it gestate. You know, elephants take an awful long time. Uh, but I, I do, yes. But um, as once I did it, what is an awful moral story is that uh, that was hay fever, which I did in three days from start to finish. Uh, which frightened me to death. Does that actually mean that you started, wrote Act One, and, and the whole thing took three days, or had you been thinking about it in, a long no. time before? With hay fever, no. I wanted to write a play for Mary Tempest, mm -hmm. and whom I adored. And I suddenly got the idea, and in those days I didn't know the word fear. I just flew at it, and wrote it, and gave it to her, and she was delighted. I was very surprised. And um, she played it for about two years. <laughs> what, what kind of, of child were you? Did, was there... Let me put that another way. Uh, I've never felt such a withering look uh, without looking. Uh, by that I meant, uh, was there a time... This is going to be an even more repulsive way of asking it, that you realized that you were Noel Coward, um, if you know what I mean, and will accept that? Two and a half. All right, have you got the... Did you all get that down? That's a little more precise an answer than I expected, but I like that. Well, the reason yeah. of that was that when I was two and a half, mm -hmm. well, I was taken to church, which was a grave mistake on the part of my mother. <laughs> and the moment the music, the organ started, I was out in the aisle dancing and was taken home and put to bed. Hardly encouraging beginning, but it showed the way the wind was blowing, didn't it? <laughs> I, I would say so, yeah. Do you and, uh, and the Lunts uh, criticize each other, or did you when you were working together? Did, Without a... ceasing. Every night, we never got out of the theater at two in the morning. That was our, what's known as coffee break. Really? We used to sit and analyze not each other's performances, it would always start by Alfred saying how awful he'd been. Oh, I was, Noli, I was terrible tonight. Then Lynn would shout him down saying, no, no, I was awful. I was worse than I've ever been. 
And I used to get sick of this and say I was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for fun when you're in New York City? Oh, I tremble to tell you. <laughs> Can you select one or two things and tell us? Frankly, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this still a third way. Um, do you go to the theater uh, when you're in town? Yes, indeed I do. Mm. I saw a brilliant play last night. <laughs> What's my next question? Don't worry, I'll answer it. All right. <laughs> right. How, how did the... What did you see last night? I have to know. I saw Private Lives. I see. <laughs> So I waded into that. Yes, and uh, I thought it was brilliantly played. Both Tammy and Brian mm -hmm. gave a stylized, highly expert and enchanting performance. When I say that Brian at moments was a tiny bit better than I was, <laughs> I don't mean it. We, uh, we must go away for a moment and recover, and we'll be back. I was just saying to Mr. Coward that it's a little odd to be sitting on a stage with bright lights and having a conversation, which is what you usually have in the living room or something. Does this seem, uh, does this seem artificial to you in any way? Or no, I've done it since I was ten, you know. Just talked? On the stage with a lot yes. of lights and sometimes a lot of people. But <laughs> you're, you're not one of those performers who... Um, who what? Did you ever forget what you were going to ask in the middle of a sentence like that? Please say yes, because I'll feel a lot better if it's happened to you, too. Oh, yes. It's happened yes. to me sometimes. Yes. But I always answer myself. <laughs> if you'd answer me now, I would feel a lot... Um, does an actor ever, uh, in your case, when you've been in a play for a very long time, um, do you ever find that in your own play you've forgotten your own lines? Oh, I yeah. changed questions in well, that stream. Well, that I know what you mean, but that I only... See, as a matter of fact, for the last so many years, I've always limited my performances to three months. Because oh. I did play the Vortex for two years. Mm -hmm. And it really gave me a nervous breakdown. It was such a very tense play. And to have to lash myself into that emotional state mm -hmm. eight times a week, the Thursday matinee. But do you enjoy New York now uh, as much as you used to when you were having fun here with the Lunts and with your other friends? Well, I still have fun here with the Lunts. Mm -hmm. And um, I always enjoy New York. I think it's changed, but then so has London changed. Everywhere has yeah. changed. But in the er very early days when I was here, and we were all three of us, very poor indeed, we used to plan the future and had some magical times together, and have ever since. The story is that you all decided what you would become, and that you would all, that Miss Fontaine would, and Mr. Lunt would become stars in a play, and that you would write a play for them, and that you actually, was there an actual evening when you sat down and said, here's what we will be, and tried it out your lives? Months. We did it for months. Months. And Alfred wanted to be an acrobat. <laughs> And to a large degree succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, I, I read an interview with you, I think it was in the London Observer, maybe the London Times, and you were talking about you're looking forward to coming to New York, and one of the things you wanted to see here uh, was O Calcutta, which, in case anyone has not heard of it, is a play in which most of the actors are nude most of the time. And uh, it's the fewer are over to sort of quiet it down now. But have you seen it, or are you looking No, I'm going to see it. Mm -hmm because uh, Kenneth Tynan used to be a critic. Uh, is there a word for what he is today? Um, or... Well, I can't say that in public. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, but he's very nice, Kenneth Tynan. And, and, and let me tell you, did me a very great service. I forgot what it was at the moment. I know. <laughs> He persuaded the National Theatre to put on Hay Fever with Edith Evans, That's right. which was very thoughtful of him. And it was a great success. 
Hmm. Imagine. He, he, he had a... You had a bit of a scrap in print once with Mr. Tynan, I remember, um, some years back. I was working for Jack Parr at the time, and you appeared on his show that night. And there, yes, there, I'd love to. In collecting things for him to look at, um, I found uh, an article where, where you had really uh, attacked the young British playwrights of that time for writing things that were a bit sordid and uh, reminded people too much of the uh, depressing aspects of life at that time. That's the kitchen sink period, yes. Mm -hmm. No, I don't remember having a great... Did I have a scrap of... Well, then Tynan wrote an article the following week uh, saying... I, I don't know if he was the one or if it was someone else who said that Mr. Coward had the last of the wine, in a sense, referring to the era of playwriting that they seemed to be feeling like they were putting an end to. I think it was Robert Bolt who said that. Yeah. Yes, but Robert Bolt is an extremely good playwright. Mm -hmm. And um, he answered that article... Very courteously and very charmingly. So, mm -hmm. I've got not one word against Mr. Bolt. Speaking of O Calcutta, if you had had the, uh, extra, dim <clears throat> the extra dimension of nudity available to you when you wrote uh, your plays, uh, would you have taken advantage of it or do you feel... Well, I have no extra uh, nudity. I'm not particularly interested in it because I think that um, the suggestion is always more interesting than statement. And my, my statement would be negligible. Statement. <laughs> <laughs> what are your rules for, for fitness? My rules for what? For fitness. I mean, everyone uh, has some kind of rules for with how they keep fit, and you're very lively at 70. And yes, I'm fairly lively. Well, my rules for fitness are to eat what I like, to drink in moderation, everything else in moderation, and to travel, and I don't do any splendid press-ups and exercises because I don't think that would suit me. <laughs> and I also think it would look very silly. <laughs> I see. Have you ever had a time in your career where you thought, maybe I would have been happier in another business, animal husbandry, or something completely disconnected with the theater? Sure. Yeah, animal? Well, I, I did. I just tried to pick something out of the air. Don't pick animals out of the air. No, I'd, well, I'm, no, 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 no. A husbandry, I think I wouldn't have been frightfully good at. Because you know all that chopping. Oh, yeah. I think I do. <laughs> Things are going past my head very rapidly here, I have a feeling.